Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Let's take a look at the headlines first. AstroSat, India's first observational class satellite ready to be launched soon. Kochi International Airport becomes world's first solar-powered airport. Alzheimer's and antioxidants. Researchers decipher the connection. And in our In Focus segment today, we will continue looking at the scientific milestones achieved by Indian science and scientists after winning independence. And now the news in detail. After 77 satellites and many successful missions, ISRO prepares for yet another feat. According to sources, AstroSat, India's first observational class satellite, is all set to be launched on 28th of September. After Chandrayaan, Mangalyaan and India's own navigational satellite system, it is time for AstroSat. AstroSat, India's first dedicated astronomy satellite, is to be launched on September 28th. Fully tested and loaded, AstroSat has reached Sri Harikota and is ready for launch. The announcement was made by the Chairman of Indian Space Research Organization, Dr. Kiran Kumar, during his recent public talk on space mission and Indian perspective at the Inter-University Centre for Astronomy and Astrophysics on 18th August. And we expect to launch this satellite AstroSat on the 28th of next month, that is in September. And this one has the scientific objectives of uh, to understand high energy processes in binary systems containing neutron stars, black hole sources, estimate magnetic fields of neutron stars. And this will provide simultaneous multi-wavelength observations using single satellite. AstroSat is India's first dedicated astronomy satellite and is an extension of the successful Indian X-ray astronomy experiment which was launched in 1996. An astronomy satellite can be imagined as a huge floating telescope in space used to observe the space and study astronomical bodies. According to earlier announcements, AstroSat is to be launched using a PSLV rocket. AstroSat will carry scientific payload with a total mass of 750 kgs containing six instruments that includes ultraviolet, visible, X-ray instruments and charged particle monitors. AstroSat will function as a multi-wavelength observatory in space and is expected to make novel astronomical discoveries. Speaking on the occasion, Dr. Kumar also said that ISRO is open to implementing innovative ideas and designs generated by academic institutions and invited academic institutions to create payloads with useful applications which can be used in future satellite launches of ISRO. He also added that with 40 kg fuel still remaining with Mangalyaan, the space probe will continue to function for significant amount of time. Kochi International Airport of Kerala has become the first green airport in the country and first airport in the world to run fully on solar power. And what is more, not only has the airport set up infrastructure to fulfill its energy needs, but also to provide to the state's electricity board. Let us see this report. While Solar Impulse 2, the world's first solar airplane, successfully crossed oceans and continents. Here comes the first completely solar-powered airport. Now in a major step towards adopting solar energy, Kerala's Cochin International Airport has become the first in the world to operate completely on solar power. The first green airport of the country, the Cochin International Airport, was inaugurated on 18th August by the Chief Minister of Kerala, Sri Uman Chandi. The solarization of Cochin Airport is a 12 megawatt solar power project and consists 46,000 photovoltaic panels. 
all the panels together have the capacity to produce 52,000 kilowatt of power of which 49,000 kilowatt will be utilized by the airport and rest will be given to the Kerala State Electricity Board. The recent transformation of the Kochi Airport into a solar energy based airport is an extension of previous small scale projects starting 2013 wherein a 100 kilowatt plant was installed over the arrival terminal with 400 panels. The plant was later scaled to 1 megawatt power. While Kochi Airport is the world's first solar energy driven airport and first green airport in the nation. As per reports, world's first green airport was built in Ecuador's Galapagos Islands in 2012 and runs solely on wind energy. Today, when India is striding fast in the area of solar energy, this historic trip is expected to provide a thrust to research on clean technologies and renewable forms of energy. Alzheimer's or dementia, a neurodegenerative disorder known to affect more than 44.4 million people worldwide. According to studies, the number is estimated to reach 75.6 million by 2030. While it has always been suspected that antioxidants may have some role to play in the treatment of Alzheimer's, a team of Indian researchers have now deciphered this connection. Let us see this report. A progressive mental deterioration that can occur in middle or old age. Alzheimer's results in loss of memory in the patients. While medical science deciphered the cause as formation of protein plaques in the brain, which eventually kills the neurons, accurate and timely diagnostics has till now been evading the medical community. But now in a major medical breakthrough, Scientists at the National Brain Research Center under the guidance of Dr. Pravat Mandal have reported clinical evidence supporting the role of a novel biomarker in diagnosing Alzheimer's disease. We do not give x-ray, we do not give any blood test. We are asking the person to go into the MRI scanner and that is a normal MRI people know and we do the MRI and we, we know the location of the brain where it is the problem. We put the chemical analysis on that spot and then we about 10 minutes we person goes into the brain I mean MRI scanner we ask them to listen songs so that there is no tension at, at all and then we detect the chemical like we are detecting here we are detecting the hippocampus region and then we say after the analysis is done then we say okay this is you have this much amount so we have a level like a, somebody have a uh, somebody have a sugar level of different range based on that we are actually measuring the how much glutathione you are normal and how much you are abnormal on the based of hippocampus glutathione content according to the researchers the new biomarker is an antioxidant named glutathione or gsh an antioxidant that protects the brain from damage Studies conducted on a group of 130 people, 40 Alzheimer's patients, 41 patients suffering from mild cognitive impairment and 49 healthy individuals showed that patients suffering from Alzheimer's disease have reduced GSH as compared to the healthy individuals. The best part of the discovery is that the levels of GSH in the brain can be assessed quickly and easily by MRI-like imaging tests, while the existing diagnostic methods for Alzheimer's are either based on clinical symptoms or invasive procedures like biopsy. Researchers claim that the GSH estimation in hippocampus region of the brain yields 100% specificity and sensitivity for distinguishing Alzheimer's disease and healthy controls. Unlike the conventional procedures, the new technique will provide further clinical insight into the disease, help early diagnosis and treatment to slow down brain's degeneration and develop new drugs. The findings have been accepted by the International Journal Biological Psychiatry for publication. 
Alzheimer's is one of the common brain disorders that affects nearly 35 million people worldwide. According to experts, by 2050, about 1 in 85 individuals over the age of 65 years will suffer from the disease. Under such conditions, the study provides a new hope towards effective management of Alzheimer's. In the form of pulav or mouth-watering biryani, rice is a favourite among many of us. However, owing to its high glycemic index, diabetics are strictly advised to abstain from rice, but not anymore. Because a Dr. Bala Sahib Savant Konkan Krishi Vidyapeet has developed a new variety of red rice that is safe for the use of patients suffering from diabetes. More in this report. Love rice on your plate but suffering from diabetes. While doctors often advise abstinence from rice to diabetics, here comes a good news. Dr. Bala Sahib Savant Konkarn Krishi Vidyapeet of Maharashtra has developed a novel variety of red rice which can be consumed by patients suffering from diabetes. The new variety of red rice with smaller grains is rich in iron and calcium and has a very low content of sugar compared to the existing commercial varieties. We have tried to develop a rice which is at par with our fine rices and fortunately through our hybrid breeding program we could come to the stage that we have that kind of uh, that kind of rices red rices and we are distributed uh, it in different uh, trials are there very soon we are going to release this kind of rices patients of diabetes are often advised not to consume large quantities of rice as studies indicate that white rice increases the risk of type 2 diabetes by 10% the new red rice variety is full of nutrients and is assumed to provide palate satisfaction to the diabetics who otherwise have to restrict rice in their diet. According to the researchers, this new variety of red rice provides one and a half times greater yield than the existing varieties currently being cultivated in the Konkan area. So this variety of rice is also good news for the farmers. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be right back. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back. You're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. In a surprising new discovery, entomologists have found that India is home to world's smallest flying insect. The insect which belongs to the class of fairy flies and is called Kiki Ki Huna was discovered in an insect trap in Yerkor in Tamil Nadu. Measuring only 0.16 mm, Kiki Ki Huna is a multicellular organism that is smaller than single-celled organisms though small in size. It can perform all the functions that happen in higher organisms and is known to lay its eggs in the eggs of other insects. Kiki Ki Huna, which was first discovered in Trinidad around 20 years ago, is also found in Hawaii, Australia and Argentina. While researchers have called for the conservation of insects after the discovery of Kiki Ki Huna, the Tamil Nadu Agricultural University is gearing up to set up India's first insect museum in Coimbatore. The museum is planned to house over 100,000 specimens of insects collected from various ecosystems and falling under categories like terrestrial insects, aquatic insects and those which live on plants. The collection will also include specimens of the Coleoptera order the largest family of the 29 orders and comprising of beetles. According to reports, the museum aims to be a help to students, entomologists, people who study insects as a hobby and farmers. 
reaching one of the most important parts of its mission. European Space Agency's Rosetta spacecraft made its closest approach to Sun on August 13. Rosetta is tracking and performing a detailed study of Comet 67P Kuryomov Gerasimenko. The perihelion happened at 2 hours 3 minutes, Green Meridian time, when the comet came within 186 million kilometers of the Sun. The activity in the comet reaches its peak intensity around perihelion and in the weeks that follow. Shedding new light on the ancient Maya civilization, archaeologists from the Autonomous University of Mexico have discovered a sacred sinkhole cave under Chichen Itza's Grand Kukalkan Castle Pyramid. The cave called a kenote is a huge water body that measures up to 35 meters across and has a depth of over 20 meters. The discovery was made using new technology that involves placing electrodes in the area surrounding the structure and delivering an electrical current to the ground. In our last episode of In Focus, we saw how post-independence India took upon the daunting task of developing self-reliance in technology. What transpired in the following three decades was incredible. From agriculture to space technologies and energy, India became a champion of all. Thanks to the scientific acumen and persistence of our researchers, India continued to make immense progress in the field of science and technology in the following years and is today a scientific superpower. Today we will see what India achieved in the past four decades in the field of science and technology and how it helped the nation to preserve its independence. In our last episode, we saw how during the 50s to the 70s, science and technology stepped in to levitate the newly freed Indian society, marred by poverty. By the 70s, India's first attempt at economic liberalization through industrialization and mild relaxation of its trade policies had started. 80s was the era of healthcare and IT. Technological advances in health and medicine contributed by organizations like Indian Council of Medical Research resulted in the production of accessible and affordable drugs. This was also the time of IT and telecom evolution in the country, with the establishment of the world leaders like Infosys in 1981. Post 80s, India underwent major changes, especially with respect to information technology. For the purpose of achieving self-sufficiency in the field, the Centre for Development of Advanced Computing CDAC, was set up in 1988. During the early 90s, CDAC successfully developed PARAM, a series of indigenously designed and assembled supercomputers that are today world acclaimed and used both by private and public sectors. Today, India is the largest user of internet and web-based technologies. The computerization of institutions including railways and introduction of novel avenues of healthcare like telemedicine are indeed some of the significant technological achievements. What is more, presently India's adore the chief position in major IT industries, ranging from Google to Microsoft. Indians also started pioneering in the field of space technology during the 80s and India started collaborating with world leaders in space science. A significant achievement came in 1984 when Indian Air Force pilot Rakesh Sharma became the first citizen of India to go into space when he flew aboard the Soviet rocket Soyuz T-11. During the 80s, ISRO also launched some of the most famous satellites like Rohini and Insat series, Arian and Bhaskara. With the development of vaccines like Raksha for cattle health and innovations like vaccine for thaleriosis, protein feed and urea molasses mineral blocks, 
the productivity of milk producing animals significantly increased and India became a milk sufficient nation. Similarly, Blue Revolution and Yellow Revolution continues to make India self-sufficient in fish and marine products and oil seeds respectively. Since early 1990s, Russia started collaborating with India on supply of nuclear fuel and we successfully launched world's first thorium-based experimental reactor, prototype fast breeder reactor, Kalpakka Mini Reactor in 1984. On 11th May 1998, Indian scientists successfully carried out nuclear tests at Pokhran, proving that India has the know-how to use nuclear fuel to generate both energy and defence mechanism and placing India in the League of Nuclear Power Nations. Stepping into the 21st century, the first decade, 2000 to 2010, is called India's Decade of Development. From industries and self-reliance in technologies to widespread mobile phone technology, healthcare and space, India achieved self-reliance in almost all sectors. A major field that saw rapid and steady progress was space science promoted by organizations like ISRO. First and foremost, Indian Astronomical Observatory with the second highest optical telescope in the world was established in 2001 in Hanle, near Leh in Ladakh. While in 2004, ISRO successfully launched the EDUSAT satellite, exclusively devoted to meet the demands of educational sector and interactive satellite-based distance education system for the country. In 2008 came one of the most important contributions of India's space program in the form of Chandrayaan. Chandrayaan-1 made a breakthrough discovery when it detected the presence of water on the moon along with the large cave below the lunar surface. From 2010 to 2015, the progress continues from indigenously developed polar satellite launch vehicles to genetically modified food. Most significant achievements during this period include the major atmospheric Cherenkov Experiment Telescope the second largest gamma ray telescope in the world, developed indigenously by Bhabha Atomic Research Center and designed to perform under extreme weather conditions. Mangalyaan, celebrated as one of the 25 best inventions of 2014 and the indigenously developed Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System. In 2014, India astonished the world with its capabilities in using predictive sciences for disaster management with the timely and accurate prediction of cyclone Hudhud. Nanotechnology has emerged as another area in which Indian researchers have gained global excellence. The Nano Mission program launched by the Government of India has resulted in some useful products like nano hydrogel based eye drops pesticide removal technology for drinking water, water filters for arsenic and fluoride removal, nano-silver based antimicrobial textile coating, etc. Today, even the largest international organizations recognize and honor the scientific acumen of Indian researchers. India is no longer an observer in the CERN experiments, but an official member of the European Organization for Nuclear Research. If one was to probe deep, it would be evident how profoundly Indian space and technology has penetrated the society, bringing about socio-economic revolution. The huge impact science has on shaping the future of this nation gives a major impetus to accelerate scientific research. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned to Rajasabha TV and think scientific. Bye-bye.